Teresa Madguil, Sherry uh, Charity Opanugo, Glenda Joseph, Rebecca Egolun, Cynthia Singh, Priscilla Ntibu, Blanca Reyes. May they and all of our faithful departed loved ones rest in peace. Amen.
the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made. And we can say that on every day, but especially on Sundays, where we call to mind the beautiful gift that the Lord has conquered death. He has risen. So every Sunday is a little Easter. That happens even in Lent, even when we don't get to say the Alleluia's and the Gloria. In fact, next week will be our last opportunity for 40 days to be singing those Alleluia's and the Gloria's. So I encourage you to keep that in mind for, for this today and for next week. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries in which the Lord Jesus Christ meets us right where we are, hallelujah. But he loves us too much to leave us there, amen? Isn't that good news? Praise God. So let us acknowledge our sins, thanking the Lord that he comes to us right in the midst of the messiness of our lives and that he comes to meet us he comes to save us. He comes to, comes to lift us up. So let us trust him as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison.
Let us pray. Keep your, keep your family safe, O oh Lord, with unending care. Let relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading, a reading from the book of Job. Job spoke saying, is that man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I rise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Yeah. Hey. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast. For an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I may too have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark.
On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He, cure, he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just a little word of by our sponsor. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if it's too hot in here, just leave the door open when you come in um, rather than pulling it closed. And, uh, and also, when you use, if you use the bathroom, just leave the bathroom door open because that really cools it off very fast. About 10 degrees, it'll go down. Now, everybody else may be upset with you, but just to let you know, those two things really bring the temperature down in here. So just thought you might want to know those. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. So I'd like to speak with you about three, three related areas. First, and I'll put a fourth one to introduce it. Praise, worship, forgiveness, healing, 
and the proclamation of the gospel. So praise and worship. One of the things that I'm reminded of in the healing mass last week, uh, excuse me, yesterday, last week, wow. Woo. Yesterday we had the healing mass. We have always an extended time of praise before that mass. And one of the things we found, and that I found this to be true again and again, is that when we enter into that praise time with our hands and with our voices, especially our voices, um, what happens is there is a, a freedom that God has to work in us. And I don't know about you, but I often come to church with a little bit of baggage. Anybody have to ever come to church with a little bit of baggage? What do I mean by that? Who just did something that I'm upset with them about? Who just didn't do something that I'm upset with them about? Or how did I think I forgot about that? Oh, oh my goodness. Or for me, as you'll hear in my voice, is pretty raspy because I had a couple late nights and, uh, and early mornings. So it was, I, and I'm, I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, is it 6 a.m. already? Wow. <laughs> um, and uh, so the, those kind of things, anybody have any of those kind of things happen before Mass? Can you raise your hand? I want to see if you're alive there. You're alive. Okay, good. Because <laughs> if you're alive, you're going to experience those things, right? It's normal. And so what the church gives us is that beginning of Mass to help us to prepare. And in the formal way in a, in a, in a, in a Mass in most churches, you would um, you have the opening song, then you have the penitential rite, and then you have the Gloria. They don't have the, the blessing of being able to extend that opening song with praise. Because I don't know about you, but like two verses of an opening song doesn't necessarily prepare my heart to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? I need more. I need more. I need more time to get, to like, get with the program. You know, uh, I'm, I can be a little bit dis distracted and, and not ready to come before the Lord. And I'm like, so I need to worship the Lord. And I want to say that to you. If that's your, your situation, which anybody who's living is going to be something of that, um, enter into that praise as much as you can. And that was a fruit of the healing mass yesterday, is that the, the, the time of the quiet before mass and the praise that we had. So we got to pray a rosary before mass and then the devotions to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is a beautiful devotion in, in every first Saturday of the month. It's wonderful. 2 p.m. is the devotion prayers, and then 3 p.m. chaplet, and then the rosary and the mass with praise and worship right after that. Anyway, we have, we have the luxury of that time. One of the blessings we have uh, here at St. Antoninus. Um, so, um, there was, and then from there we go into the mass, the, the uh, penitential rite. And the penitential rite is very, very important. It's vital for, um, for our preparedness. So our preparedness. First, we have to acknowledge our sins. That's the first part, right? And that's what we, we primarily focus on in the penitential rite, my sins. Uh, most of the time, when we think of sins, we think of what we did. But as we grow in the spiritual life, the primary area of sin is actually what we didn't do. The love that we didn't give to God and the love that we didn't give to others. That actually, that's, when you're growing the spiritual life, that's where your focus moves to. From the sins I committed to the good that I missed. And that's part of that, you know, act of contrition that we say, the, um, excuse me, the confidio. Now, but the, another part of that preparation 
is what Jesus said, before you bring your gift to the altar, what do you have to do? Does anybody remember? You have to be reconciled with your brother or sister. Now, something of that is very um, misunderstood. And, and just, you'll hear me say this many times over because we forget. Even though we know it, we kind of forget when it comes to the actual situation. Forgiveness as a three-part reality. And there are other things that are not necessarily part of forgiveness. And quite simply, forgiveness is always going to be a grace I receive. It's always a gift God gives to me first. Hallelujah. So I don't have anything to give if I don't receive first. And I'm receiving from that fountain of God's mercy all the time because I'm a poor sinner. And I need his forgiveness. And so the crazy thing is, even the, 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 the places in which I experience those constant struggle with those venial sins become an opportunity for God's grace to fill me. My need becomes opportunity for blessing. Now, so it's a grace I receive, and then it's a, it's a decision I make. Forgiveness doesn't really come from me. It's a decision that I say, let your forgiveness flow through me. I don't hold it back. It's not a feeling, it's a decision. Fundamentally, it is a decision. That is most, that's so much better, isn't it? My goodness. It's a decision. So, a grace I receive, a decision I make, I choose it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive this so-and-so for doing such and such. You know? And you name the person, not with the, not with the obs obscenities, <laughs> but with their name and for what they did. You forgive them. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This is the reality of what Jesus spoke about us from the cross. And then it is an action I take. What's that action? I pray for them. Father, forgive them. So I forgive them in your name. Father, forgive them. I ask for your mercy upon them. I pray and bless them. Bless your persecutors. Pray for those who mistreat you, right? Jesus said that. So that is essential to do that. Forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean trusting a person. It doesn't have to be a feeling, warm fuzzies. It doesn't have to be any of that stuff. It doesn't even necessarily mean reconciliation because that requires two. Now we should pray for the grace to discern the timing and be open to as soon as possible, that reconciliation. We shouldn't let the sun go down on our anger. If it's your spouse, you should be doing it quickly, especially, but anyone, anyone, we should seek that. Sometimes there are circumstances where it's very difficult to be reconciled, but you choose the forgiveness again and again, and you bless that person. Because the reality is sometimes trust is not easy, not so easy to give, and it shouldn't be giving sometimes. Okay, so I say this to you as a pre, pre uh, uh, before I want to say the primary nature of my speak uh, homily is that most recently at the healing mass, there was a person who experienced the grace, or first experienced, gave witness to like, like experiencing conversion. You know, there's a point of, of conversion that they weren't really kind of closely following the Lord. Then they had experience of encountering the Lord, a conversion, and they were walking with the Lord. And then along the way, they experienced something of an illness, actually a stomach ailment. And, um, and, and the word that was spoken to them, however that was spoken to them, was to forgive. And there was a family member that this person had to forgive. And the moment she forgave this family member, just a grace to say, declare, in Jesus' name, I forgive this person for such and such. Which, by the way, is not a one-time thing. <laughs> Have you noticed that sometimes when somebody hurts you, it comes back to mind? Have you noticed that? Does that mean you haven't forgiven them? No, not necessarily. <laughs> it might be, but most of the time, it's just because there's a wound. And so you have to choose forgiveness again. It's like any wound, you know, you gotta clean it out. 
and you got to bandage it, you know, and that's the way it heals. So you got to forgive again, clean it out, clean out that, keep that wound clean so it can heal. In fact, the grace in those situations is, is you're blessing that person. God is already using that wound that you experience, which unites him, you to his wound. Remember, nothing is wasted in the kingdom. So that wound that we were afflicted with, we would say, oh, if only that didn't happen. But the Lord says, but no, don't say that. Give it to me because you and I will be united in this. And it will be grace. Grace for your conversion. Grace for the conversion of this person. Grace for the whole world. And so as this person, again, maybe for the first time, or maybe for the 10th or 100th time, I don't know which, Pray that prayer of forgiveness. God began to heal that disturbance in her stomach and, and give her a, a, a grace of, of just better help, physical help, <clears throat> as a result of that forgiveness. So many times, physical illnesses are connected with spiritual realities. Fundamentally, they always are, but sometimes they're directly connected and that we can immediately do something to deal with it. And so that's what she did, and experienced that grace of that healing. Now, it's not, that, not only did that happen, but then, because she was grateful to God for what he had done for her, and grateful for this new freedom, not only the, the, the area of disturbance in her stomach was gone, but in her spirit, she was more free easily to more easily able to pray and just happier quite honestly um, she was more quick to share that with others that she was telling others this is what the Lord has done for me this is what the Lord has done for me and others then are having an opportunity to receive that same grace and <clears throat> and this is the grace that the Lord wants for all of us. He wants all of us to experience this same cycle of reality of grace in our lives. We always experience the sin. We always experience the disappointments. We always experience the people hurting us. That's going to happen. But what are we going to do with it? You know, this is, this is where the grace is, it, that God is pouring out is inviting us to allow him to do something to he's going to surprise us. He wants to surprise you and me. And that was the prayer of my heart as we were beginning this Mass. Lord, surprise us. Surprise each of us. You know, remember, he's a lover. He's a romantic. He loves to surprise his beloved. He loves to. May we be open to that, that surprise of God. And, and then you can't keep it to yourself. And so that's... St. Paul, when he talked about that in the second reading, um, first, first remember this. The gospel reading shows that Jesus is attentive to those ordinary needs of our lives. He's attentive to them. He's not distant saying, hey, get over it. No. Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Oh, by the way, how did Peter have a mother-in-law? How do you have a mother-in-law? You got to have a spouse, right? You got to have a wife or a husband. So Peter, apparently, was married. Now, but the interesting thing, the mother-in-law was taking care of the hospitality. What does that mean about Peter's wife? That means she probably was deceased. He was probably a widower. Um, I'm just filling in the pieces of what um, seems to be pretty evident in what's going on. Okay, so, and, and, uh, and again, his mother-in-law is taking care of hospitality, not his wife, because his wife apparently is not there. She's perhaps already gone home to the Lord. Anyway, and that was, that would have been a great sorrow for Peter. Apparently he didn't have any children. That was another sorrow, right? And he could have crawled into a ball, you know, in a corner somewhere and said, I give up on life. Life stinks. My wife died, so I didn't have any children. Life's miserable. But instead, 
that became the opportunity for grace, availability for the kingdom of God. God surprised. God's surprise has come in the most amazing, crazy ways. I'm sure Peter did not expect that surprise. How God is wonderful. So, uh, St. Paul, in the, in the second reading, St. Paul's uh, letter to uh, the Corinthians, first letter, he, he talks about he is obligated, he is compelled, he is... Um, he, he, he cannot not, he, can, he has to preach the gospel. Um, but why? Because it's been entrusted to him and it weighs upon him and he has to give it away. If he doesn't, he realizes this great gift will become now a judgment upon him. Literally, he says, to my condemnation if I don't preach the gospel. Like, you think, really? Well, isn't that crazy? That St. Paul is saying that I would risk end up spending eternity separated from God if I don't use this gift for the kingdom of God. And why would he say such a thing? That seems pretty radical. Well, because the gift was so extraordinary, <clears throat> The obligation is greater, right? Think about it. When you are babysitting, you have one obligation to take care of uh, the children you're babysitting. You're an uncle or an aunt. You have another deeper obligation. It's kind of ingrained more deeply. Sometimes you become an aunt or an uncle simply by the relationship. You become that, not initially. When you're a, but when you're a parent or a godparent, or you, you, you can enter into that role in a deeper way, well, was, your obligation is greater. Every step you take in terms of uh, intimacy, you have a greater obligation. St. Paul was brought into an incredible intimacy with God, and God poured into him this grace that he said, I have to give it away. Like, I've been entrusted with these talents. I have to spend them on the, on, on the kingdom of God. I must. And so... Brothers and sisters, for you and I, each of us have been entrusted with gifts and talents, but the most fundamental gift or talent is the Lord himself, the gospel message, the, the proclamation of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And this is what the Lord has done for me, that proclamation. We don't necessarily have a particular talent to preach the gospel in the way St. Paul did. But the scriptures clearly declare everyone must always be ready to give the reason for their hope. In some way, we ought to be always ready. Not sometimes, not most of the time, all the time. When you're in your sick bed in the hospital, when you're at your deathbed, and you're breathing your last. What are the words coming out of your mouth? Well, it'll all depend on what you say in the inconveniences along the way. You'll be prepared for that last breath to be praise of God when you've been praising and giving witness to him along the way. And, and the Lord wants to train us. He wants us first to recognize, wow, I've been given so much. He wants us to, to, like, let us know, you've been given so much. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Do not hold back and receive it. I want to give you more. I want to give you more. I want to bless you. I want to strengthen you. I want to give you all that you need. I, I never want to leave you lacking. I want to fill you up. Why? Just because he loves us. He loves to bless his children. That's the number one reason. It's like the number one reason, the number one obligation that we have to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The number one reason God blesses us is because he loves us. But love is always overflowing. It's always expansive. It's never, can't be contained. And so the second reason 
which goes right with that first one, just like the first one for us is love of God. And then what's the second one? Love of, come on, love of neighbor. So it is God blesses us so that we might share the joy of being his blessing to our neighbors. That is that very, very close second to because he loves us. And would be, it'd be, it would be such a shame for us to, to receive such a love and then be stingy with it. Ah, what a terrible thing to do that. You know, I'm afraid, and, and I'll give an example of how we're stingy with God's love. We're very stingy Catholics. Very, we have been given everything, but many who have much less than us give much more of themselves for this purpose of the kingdom. Like, we can be so concerned about what people think of us. I don't wanna say that because they're gonna think I'm weird. Or my friends at work, won't be my friends if I don't participate in that gossip or if I tell them about Jesus or if I tell them why I have peace or how I get strained. You know, that we're always concerned, we're always measuring the cost of giving witness. Brothers and sisters, we have to stop measuring. We have to stop measuring in that way. We can't keep counting the cost all the time. Look, come on, he paid everything. He, he, he knew the price and he paid it all. We cannot, we are compelled, we are obligated, we, are, we must be driven for the, by the love of God to not be silent. Now, what does that not be silent mean? Oh, it's so different in every situation. It doesn't mean we get on our soapboxes at work and it's different in each situation. But we're always mindful. We're always having it in our heart and our mind. Lord, give me opportunity today. Today, give me opportunity today to tell someone about what you've done for me. We never wanna get tired of telling our story or some piece of our story, even as it's being written, as it is for all of us, because we're still here. Someone else isn't telling it, we're telling it, so therefore it's still being written. So we wanna constantly exercise that telling of the story. This is the reason for my hope. In fact, in, in the parish, uh, they announced at the prayer meeting, not this Wednesday, but last Wednesday, that this coming Thursday, we will be meeting on Zoom at 8 p.m. to go over to, to everyone who comes on it to have an opportunity to practice giving their testimony. And of course, there may be lots of people on that call, so we break into small groups. And you break into a small group of three or four people, and you each tell your conversion story or a piece of it and and we need to practice that and we need input from the other person to say what well, they say what they first they say wow because <laughs> that's the first thing you always want to say when someone gives their testimony wow that's awesome praise God and then maybe a little input you know maybe you should say a little bit more about this because I really didn't understand what you were saying when you went from this is the way I was to this is the way I am. Like something was missing there. Tell us a little more about that. And that's what you do in those small groups. You kind of just, because in, in the Zoom you can break up into small groups, you know. And, and, uh, and you just kind of give that input. Why? Because we want to refine our ability to announce the good news. We want to do that. We want to help each other. You know what? I got to tell you, that has been such a blessing to me to be able to do that. Of course, even greater blessing is not so much the input that people have given me, but the continuing to do it and the Holy Spirit input. And the input that I see with what, quote, works and what doesn't work. So, for example, I've learned 
that less is more. Now, you, you don't notice that when I'm preaching because I always preach more. <laughs> but when it comes to witnessing, less is more. Like just to give a little bit so that the person still has an appetite for what you're saying. That they would inside say, I want some of that. They may not say it this way, but inside they're saying it. And then you plant that seed and then you move on. Like a bumblebee or a butterfly just landing, pollinating, and moving on. You know, and that's sometimes all the Lord asks of us. Sometimes we have a greater opportunity, and that's good to learn how to do that, to take someone to a decision to accept Jesus as the Lord of their lives. And what a beautiful thing to do that, to pray with someone, healing. You know, what a beautiful thing. But, but wherever we are, the Lord wants to stir in us a greater zeal for the proclamation, for giving that testimony. So may the Lord help you and me to do that each day, every day, to look for, Lord, give me at least one opportunity every day to give witness to you in some big or little way. May I be open to that. And may I recognize, ah, this is the one you planned. This is the appointment you planned for me. This is the divine appointment you planned for me. I have this appointment, but you planned this one. Hallelujah. Your plans are the best. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so... Um, as you can see, we have TV screens up here. They weren't temporarily put up here. God bless the people who um, uh, paid for them to, so that we could have them in the, in the lower church here. Because we knew that people were saying that they couldn't always see the screen over here. So, and since these, someone was offering, we said, okay, sold. <laughs> so we put them up. It'll be a little bit more adjusted as time goes on, but... We're going to now look at the, the video of the annual appeal, the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal. Uh, I just ask you to take a look at that. Please move on. Thank you, thank you Kenneth Chuku. And, uh, and just as, as Kenneth Chuku is setting up, and, and as quickly as you're able to do that, that would be great. Um, just to give a little introduction to it, um, you receive something in the mail if you've ever given to the annual appeal, or even if you haven't, if you're a registered person, you probably receive something in the mail from the Archdiocese. And, uh, and what, um, what I do each year is depending on my finances when the annual appeal comes up, I either will make a donation at that moment if I have the means, or I'll make a pledge so that I kind of give once a month a portion of that pledge so that I'm able to give generously. So here you go. Supporting the Archdiocese of New York's annual appeal is a call to embody our faith's mission. It is an opportunity to impact the Archdiocese and the lives within it significantly. The annual appeal supports many migrant ministries and outreach programs essential to our Catholic faith. It's also our point to note that a significant portion of the funds raised goes back to the parish. Diocese and the lives within it significantly. 
Manual Appeal supports many life ministries and outreach programs essential to our capital faith. It's also our goal to note that a significant portion of the funds raised goes back to the parishes in rebates, assessment rate reductions, and grants. Thanks to your generosity, our annual appeal exceeded its $9 million goal last year by raising over $10 million, an amount that hasn't been raised in over a decade. Let's take a look at the impact this had. $10 million was contributed to Passing on the Faith. $2.5 million helped caring for the poor and the vulnerable. $1 million spent for proclaiming gospel. $2.5 million helped form future priests and support retired clergy. And over $2.1 million went back to parishes through rebates, assessment rate reductions, and grants. So we, we ask that each, I ask you, each person, if you're able, each family, to be able to give something, whatever it is you're able to give, just ask the Lord. Um, I, I know from my own experience as a priest in the last 30, almost 32 years, um, I have eight years I was director of Respect Life. That was one of those positions that was funded by the annual appeal for 15, 20, 20 years. I've been a spiritual director at the seminary. That's also been a key part of um, that funding. As a campus minister uh, in a college campus that was also funded by the annual appeal. And so I um, ask you to just give generously as the Lord has given you capacity. Amen. So um, there is, uh, you can, at this time, we'll go right into the uh, creed and the intercessions, uh, but if there's a, it's something you can write anything of your pledge on there. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Or in the offering itself, uh, you can write a check to, uh, I, I believe it's the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal, but it, it will say it on it exactly how it's written. Thank you. Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our petitions before our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, all the bishops, clergy, and all church leaders, that in obedience to Christ, under the authority of Christ, they, mo they may proclaim and manifest the kingdom and power of God over illness and every evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in public office, that they may work for peace in all parts of the world and dispel fear, prejudice, and hatred. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us, that like the Apostle Paul, we may faithfully and zealously seek to bring others to Christ in selfless service without seeking personal gain or fear of personal loss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for the Lord's healing over marriages and families in distress, especially as we prepare for the World Marriage Week this Wednesday. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord as, we prepare, as we prepare for the season of Lent, we ask the Holy Spirit to give us a deeply repentant heart and a great longing for a fresh encounter with Jesus through his life, death, and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our sick brothers and sisters, particularly Ron Siwaf, Femi and Steven Kuye, Lena Dinhau, Ken Julian, Cecile Joseph, Megan Joseph, Brendan Igwe, Chimezie Igwe, Teresa DeSau, Rosemary Joseph, Marie Joseph, Marie Jo Anatus, and all of the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. May the victory of sin, Christ over sin and death bring hope, eternal life to those who have died and consolation to those who mourn. We especially pray for Genevieve McNeil, Sandy Condren, Rebecca Laya, Lillian Emunio Ayamu, Alagano Hill, Brian Uba, Augustine Onubuya, Dorothy Joseph Okafo, Antonia Lechi Mbaru, and all of the deceased loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, how mysterious, how wonderful that you deemed us worthy of the complete sacrifice and offering of your Son for our salvation and reconciliation with you. 
And so with confidence, the confidence of that love, we bring these petitions before you in all the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We ask the Lord's blessing upon your offering. May the Lord make it fruitful uh, in your lives and in this church. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. And just a, a reminder that uh, there are three baskets because the first one is uh, uh, the building fund. What that means is funds that are not assessed by the diocese.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. And even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising to the setting of the sun, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, and on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. <clears throat> Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who, to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us off one another the sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
just going to invite us to enter into a moment of just a silence for maybe 30 seconds or so. Just to listen in that silence to the Lord speaking into the depths of our hearts. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Is anyone here for the first time? I just want to welcome you. Anyone here for the first time? Blessed be God. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent is February 14th. That is one week from this Wednesday. We will have three masses on that day, 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. with the distribution of ashes at each mass as well as a 3 p.m. Divine Mercy Chaplet and service, prayer service, where ashes will be distributed as well. Ash Wednesday is a day of prayer, fasting, and abstinence. And please see the flyers for the schedule. Um, we made a schedule for Ash Wednesday. It also includes Fridays of Lent so that you might pass that on to others. Now, are they been handed out already? The, the, you can't, can you hear me? Ah, maybe that would help. Yeah. What a concept, the power button. You could always go like this, by the way, when you can't hear me. I'm not so good with sign language, but this one I get. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Did you hear anything of what I just said? All right. So there are flyers. Have they been given out already? Please make sure they're given out to everyone. What we're looking for is for you to take them with you and to give them out to many people. So that's what we want to do. We want to just, you know anybody who needs to come home for, for Lent? Pass them all, pass them out to others. In addition, every Friday of Lent is a day of abstinence, that is no meat, and a day to remember in a very special way the passion of our Lord to help us in this, in addition to our daily 12 noon mass, Tuesdays through Saturdays, which I encourage you to try and make part of your schedule here or wherever you might be able to it based on your schedule. Every Friday of Lent, we will have an additional mass at 7 p.m. followed by the Stations of the Cross. And that will probably be down here, but we'll see. Please don't miss this special opportunity of grace for the whole family. Remember that penance without prayer is empty. 
of meaning and prayer without penance is lacking the power. So that Lent, as we resolve to give up something, especially sin, may we also resolve to begin a new, to cultivate in a new way our relationship with the Lord through prayer. I encourage you to take advantage of the Guadalupe Chapel and the hours of adoration every Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. as well as to take advantage of opportunities to cultivate our relationship with the Lord and our relationship with our brothers and sisters through works of charity. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are the, the basic pillars of Lent. You'll hear those again. National Marriage Week is observed from seven, February 7th through the 14th, beginning, that is beginning this Wednesday. We recognize the tremendous personal, social, and spiritual pressures that your marriages and families are facing these days. So here at St. Antoninus Church, we want to come alongside of you in support and with refreshing and life-giving vision for marriage contained in the Word of God and the living example of the saints, the living witness of the saints. Let me just say this, um, I have had an unprecedented um, number of friends and family members who are experiencing uh, crises in their marriage. Every marriage experiences some kind of crisis along the way. That's normal. Sometimes the person you least want to be with is the person you're married to sometimes. I've heard that many times. Um, but, you know, you pass through that and you move on. But the reality is there is, there, there is such an attack upon families right now, upon marriages, that a lot of marriages are faltering and where they're, they're literally giving up the fight, giving up the, the, the battle. The, the vows that they made until death do us part became until it's just too much. And it's too much because we don't have those supports. We don't have those things that renew us in, in our vocations. And so this is why we are going to have a retreat for marriages. Particularly, we invite all couples to participate in a seven-day at-home marriage retreat, which we will be, be, we'll have beginning this Wednesday at 8 p.m. This retreat will include a 15 to 30 minute Zoom call with other couples in the parish, followed by at, or preceded by, depending on your schedule, each couple coming together on their own in their homes to prayerfully enter into a brief prayer and discussion time together. To get the Zoom link, please look at the constant contact emails you receive once a week if you are on our mailing list. If you're not, please uh, fill out one of those registration forms before you leave. You can also go to our website at St. Antoninus Church. All of those are spelled out completely, .org. This retreat that we will be having on Zoom will take only 15 to 30 minutes a day. That is, if your discussions don't get sparked and you start to talk even more with each other, which would be a nice problem. May you be open to that as whatever way it would be. I will be facilitating this Zoom portion of the um, retreat with two other couples. And again, the Zoom portion of the retreat is at 8 p.m. beginning this coming Wednesday. Next, next Sunday, February 11th, the actual World Marriage Day, which is in the middle of this home retreat. During each of the Masses, we will have a special blessing for married couples, as well as a blessing for any couples who are preparing for marriage. To celebrate, we will also have food after this Mass. Um, speaking of food, in case I forget, 
we do have refreshments and I'll need some help with um, gathering that food. I know uh, you're, you have an announcement in reference to this. Okay, sure, I'll get right back to you. Don't go, don't go for a minute, don't yet. Keep me in front. So um, in terms of refreshments, we'll have refreshments after mass. What I'm gonna ask you to do, rather than removing all the chairs, just because it's more, it's easier to not deal with that, just take the back row out and put the round tables, or the round tables that are back there, not the folding round tables. They're a mess, they don't, they're really hard to work with. So there's about, five tables there that are not folding, and there's about four over here, and just set them up over here and in the back there, and we should have plenty of space for refreshments. Um, we also recognize there are many couples who are not yet married in church, and we want to assist you as well in your journey to the altar, that you too may receive your Heavenly Father's blessing. Please contact me or any of the priests of your choosing that you may, we may help you make this happen soon. And by the way, a lot of times, a couple that's not married in church needs someone like you to say, hey, come on, that was in my situation too. Come on, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, help you get your marriage blessed in the church. And even if it's a little bumpy ride to get there, um, many times with a little perseverance, uh, that will happen. And there's an announcement, the women of the parish. Right, nice and close, nice and close. Just to remind women to please, um, at the end of mass, to wait right over there. Where the food is? Area. Oh, okay, you can and have everybody there. Area for a few minutes mm -hmm. of the information. You may want to meet them over there. Everybody's going to go there. Okay, so we can... We can meet on this other side instead of here because people would be taking some food and stuff. So this area might be a little better than that kind of Okay, Thank great. You. Praise God. And we definitely need help with the setup of the food uh, next week. So um, if I could, if you could see me afterwards to, uh, to get some volunteers to be involved in that setup. Okay, we'll provide that food. And we have a couple of people who will help provide that as well. Um, so if you could see me, and, and I, any, um, anyone's coming to serve next week who, who can just, you can just help with that food. Was anyone scheduled to come to serve next week? Uh, the refreshments? Okay, you were, okay. And if you could assist, thank you very much. They're gonna need lots of help, so we need many hands, so the ladies who often uh, serve in different ways if you could just jump in for a little bit to facilitate that praise God Glory to God. Oh by one other, one other thing uh, from our sponsor if you are when you're heading out the door um, If keep in mind those who are staying for fellowship and try to close that door after you is because they'll be frozen chosen um, if you if you uh, um, Leave the door open Are you raising your hand for me? Oh, thank you. Anyone have a birthday this month of February? Of February? Yay! Isn't this February? We're February. Yay! Come on, come on. Stand up. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for these February birthdays. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, may your grace and your blessing, your favor, your mercy, your love, let your sons and daughters know that you delighted in the day, not only of their birth, but the day that was hidden to everybody else, but not to you, the moment they first came to be in their mother's womb. Oh, Lord, bless them. Bless them. May they know profoundly your favor upon them. And they may trust you more and give everything over to you so that you might reveal your glory in them and through them. 
In Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Happy birthdays. Praise God. What's that? Oh, sure, sure. Next Saturday, we'll have a parish council meeting, 930 in the rectory chapel. 930 in the rectory chapel. Thank you. Please stand. Bow down for the blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Antoninus. Amen.